And the reason why you see this is because vulgarity is many times stored in the amygdala part of your brain. That's your emotional part of your brain. And here's a tip for you folks. If that prosecutor reads your detailed statement and it paints that clear of a picture of what occurred, and that prosecutor realizes that a jury would also say that they would have shot him too and even shot him sooner, that prosecutor won't file charges on you to begin with. This is going to be one of the most important videos that gun owners can watch regarding self-defense. This video is going to briefly talk about mistakes that many gun owners make when they explain their actions to the police after they've defended themselves, and these are mistakes that can put them in prison for decades or for life. Folks, this video is going to help you for that legal fight that you will have after you've won the fight where you defend yourself against a violent attacker. So let's head to the range. Hey, for new viewers, I am a 20-year law enforcement veteran, plus I've also been involved in a really ugly police action self-defense shooting myself. Also, too, I am a use of force instructor, so everything that I give to you in this video is from real life experience. So let's set this video up. Let's say that you were violently attacked and that you either shot or seriously injured your attacker in defending yourself. Either way, the police are gonna show up and they are going to have a lot of questions because, well, they always have a lot of questions when they have a dead body or somebody that's very seriously injured. Now, in past videos, you have heard me suggest that right after that self-defense shooting that you only give a very brief statement to the cops, something along the lines of the that guy guy pulled a weapon on me. I was in fear for my life, so I defended myself. Now I don't feel good and I wish to be taken to the hospital and I don't want to answer any more questions until I speak to my attorney. Now that very brief statement that I always suggest to give at this scene immediately after that shooting is again just a super brief statement that you give that that buys you a little bit of time that keeps you out of jail right then and there obviously as long as the evidence points to whatever your brief statement is saying what occurred however not all self-defense shootings are so clear-cut and your attorney is going to know this and i want to make sure that you know this also but it may not be unusual that after you have been forced to shoot a violent attacker in self-defense, it may not be unusual for your attorney to tell you that it's going to be you of you to give the police at a later date a detailed statement of what occurred. This way it paints a clear picture to law enforcement that you did a legal and justified self-defense shooting. Now, if and when that time comes, one of the first mistakes that I see people make when they try to describe their self-defense actions is that they generalize and they infer things. So now the first thing to remember about generalized or inferred statements is that those kinds of statements can be misinterpreted and or even distorted to be used against you to try to put your butt in prison for decades. Just as an example here, if a criminal threatened you just right before you shot that criminal in self-defense, don't just tell law enforcement that that criminal threatened you. Say exactly how he threatened you. An example of that would be that you would tell law enforcement that he threatened you by screaming at you, I am going to put you six feet under. Or he pulled a knife and said, I'm going to cut you up. And it's very important to remember that threats happen both verbally and also physically. So a good example would be, instead of just saying he threatened me with the knife, more proper articulation might be something along the lines of, he started stomping towards me. He had the look of hatred on his eyes. He said he was gonna cut me up and put me six feet under. He had the knife in his hand as he stomped toward me. Or let's say instead of shooting your violent attacker, let's say you pepper sprayed him instead. Now, a lot of people use terminology like, well, he became belligerent, he became combative, so I pepper sprayed him. So instead of using words like belligerent and combative that can be easily misinterpreted, make sure that you describe exactly how that he was belligerent or how he was combating. An example of this might be that guy as he approached me, he bladed his body in a fighting stance. He had his, his hands balled up into fists. He started stomping towards me. He had a scowl on his face and he started saying, I'm going to F you up. It's those little details like that that really paint a, a clear picture of what actually occurred to you right before you defended yourself. Now let's say you had a robbery suspect approach, you pull a weapon and demand your money. 
When you give your detailed statement to the police, you don't want to just say that he robbed you. You want to be descriptive of exactly how he robbed you because in many states, robbery is defined as the taking of something from somebody else by force. So technically, if a robbery suspect approaches you and says, give me all your money or I'm going to, I'm going to flick your nose, by law, that is robbery, but that would not be a legal and justified reason to shoot that robbery suspect. So in your detailed statement, you would actually want to put the elements or those little small facts that actually put you in fear for your life. An example would be, he approached me. He pulled a deadly weapon on me. He demanded my money. Now, the next thing that's really important to remember is that you need to articulate how those actions from that bad guy made you feel right before you were forced to shoot him in self-defense. So if his actions made you fear for your life, you need to state that you feared for your life in that detailed statement. Now, it's important to remember that those words of, I was in fear for my life, are not magic words that are automatically going to keep you out of jail or keep you out of prison. You have to remember that the evidence is going to have to support what you say. The evidence is going to have to support that a reasonable person would have been in fear for their life right before they shot and killed their attacker. But part of that evidence is your statement. Part of that evidence is that clear picture using those little descriptive facts that help to paint, the, again, that clear picture of why a reasonable person would have been in fear for their life. You want a judge, a jury, and a prosecutor to read your statement and say to themselves, I would have shot that bad guy myself. In fact, I would have shot him sooner. And folks, it's also important to remember that if you do get arrested and charged for murder because you were forced to defend yourself against a violent criminal, that it can cost upwards to a million dollars to successfully fight and defeat a murder charge in court. And that is exactly why I belong to Firearms Legal Protection and use it not just for myself, but also for my family. You defend yourself and they will help defend you against a liberal process prosecutor that's trying to put you away in prison for decades. Link below if you want to check them out. And another thing to remember is that beyond the verbal threats from that bad guy and or the physical threats that that bad guy's given you, another thing that you can articulate in your detailed statement is any physical reactions that your body, that you experienced, both before, during, and after that self-defense shooting. Examples of this that people commonly experience during self-defense shootings is they felt like their heart was gonna jump out of their chest. They had tunnel vision. They didn't hear their gunshots. They had auditory exclusion. After the incident was over with, they got a massive headache that was a, an adrenaline dump. Those are all common symptoms that people experience during a life or death situation when they are truly in fear that they are about to die. So those should make it into your your detailed statement. Whatever you do, do not go to Kay Marie's channel and subscribe to it. She espouses conservative truths, or as the liberals call it, hate speech. So whatever you do, do not go to her channels and absolutely do not watch any of her videos. A liberal will shed a tear if you do. And here is a really big one. It is very common that when you see police action shooting videos that you will hear the cops yelling, drop that effing weapon, drop that effing weapon, right before they are forced to shoot that bad guy. I have personally seen police officers that rarely ever cussed, but they got into a situation like that where things started going sideways. Suddenly they were dropping the F-bombs like it was nobody's business. And the reason why you see this is because vulgarity is many times stored in the amygdala part of your brain. That's your emotional part of your brain. So if you experience that in your self-defense shooting, then you and your attorney should consider including that in your detailed statement. What you will be doing there is you will be using science to explain how you were in such fear for your life that you became so emotional over that that you started drop, dropping the F-bombs. And in essence, what you will probably be doing is using, using science on your behalf to beat the prosecutor to the punch who will probably try to use your usage of f-bombs and stuff like that to try to paint you as an angry cold-blooded killer that was just out for revenge or whatever. And here is something that so many gun owners and self-defenders forget about. We have to remember that besides the verbal threats from the bad guy, besides the physical threats from the bad guy, besides the physical symptoms that you experienced during that self-defense incident, we also have to remember that there are 
environmental hazards around us during that self-defense incident. For example, if a violent attacker has you pinned to the ground, he's on top of you, AKA a full mount, and he is bashing your head into the concrete that's below you guys, that would be an example of a environmental hazard because him bashing your head into that concrete is more than likely gonna split your head open and even kill you. So those are important things, environmental hazard wise, to make sure that it gets put into your detailed statement. And here's a tip for you folks. If that prosecutor reads your detailed statement and it paints that clear of a picture of what occurred, and that prosecutor realizes that a jury would also say that they would have shot him too and even shot him sooner, that prosecutor won't file charges on you to begin with. Now, as a quick reminder, these detailed statements that I'm talking about are typically given after you've had at least two nights of sleep after the incident and also it's given with your attorney your self-defense attorney by your side and this is super important here and that is that we never lie or embellish in our statements of what occurred if you killed somebody in cold blood then you need to go to prison however if you were honestly in fear for your life before you shot that bad guy, then make sure you paint a clear picture in your detailed statement, like in the examples that I gave in this video. So now I want you to articulate to me. I wanna see how you would articulate it if two men approached you in a dark park and they had empty hands, but two different men approach you as you're walking down the sidewalk of a dark park and as these two men approach you, they get close to you and they demand your money. Comment down below with how you would articulate that detailed statement. And did you know that several states actually have self-defense laws that favor the criminal over you? So to learn about this law and to learn how it can put your butt in prison for decades to come, click on the video that should be appearing on the screen just about now to learn that powerful knowledge. Anyways, folks, this is enough internet for me today. I do actually need to go train. And folks, if you made it this far, Hey, thank you very much for watching, and I pray that you have a good night.